understanding Rizzer stages and how it influences the progression of your scoliosis. The most common question I get asked when I consult with a patient with scoliosis is, is my scoliosis going to get worse or is it a progressive problem? And the unfortunate truth is that scoliosis will worsen and it's in its nature to worsen over time. So even though we can't guarantee the degree of worsening and how much it's going to worsen, and we can't always predict that, we know that when a scoliosis is diagnosed at that time, whatever size it is, it's no indicative of where it would stay. So if you're diagnosed with a mild scoliosis, it doesn't mean it's going to stay mild. It can progress to moderate, to severe, and even to very severe. So unfortunately, as scoliosis progression occurs, it makes scoliosis harder to treat because the bigger the curve becomes, the more complex the scoliosis is. And typically, the more rigid it becomes and the more rotated and curved it becomes. And both of these things make it less responsive to treatment. As spinal rigidity gets, gets stiffer and as the curve gets stiff and rigid, it's harder for the patient to respond to um, conservative type of care like therapeutic exercises and rehabilitation. But it can also be more difficult for, pay, for even surgeons to perform uh, surgeries because the curve becomes stiff. So the larger the curve, the more uneven forces that are exposed to throughout the body, the more difficult it can be to treat the patient either conservatively or not conservatively. So therefore, it's much easier to work in preventing the curve from worsening than it would be trying to reverse a curve that's become severe already. So we always like to recommend treating curves smaller because the smaller the curve you treat, the more likely it is to produce a positive result, meaning you're never gonna have a severe rigid scoliosis that's more complicated. Now, unfortunately, our traditional treatment approaches to scoliosis, even though we know the smaller the curve, the better the results, not are always, they're always recommending treatment when curves are small. And you're going to soon see as we go through what traditional options when it looks at scoliosis. So is there a way to know how much a curve will worsen? So if I look at a patient with, uh, you know, say 10 or 11 years old with a, you know, with a 10 degree curve and I say I have 10 patients, 10 years old, all 10 degree curves, which one can I say this one's going to get worse, this one's this is not going to get worse? Unfortunately, there's no single test to determine the rate of progression with 100% accuracy. There's no way of knowing exactly which of those 10 will worsen to 20, which ones are going to worsen to 40, which ones are going to worsen to 60, which ones are going to worsen to 100. Uh, the biggest curve I've ever seen in a growing child has been a 155 degree. However, we do know that the most likely cause of progression in children is when they grow. Growth by far is the number one risk factor associated with progression. So the more, the bigger the curve is, while they're still actively growing, the more likely they are to worsen as they grow. Right? So that's a direct equation. So as their curve becomes bigger and as they're still growing, the more likely they are to continue to get bigger. And the best way of determining whether somebody is growing in a scoliosis patient is something that we call Rizzer stages. Now, a Rizzer stage or a Rizzer sign is a way of determining skeletal maturity of a patient. Skeletal maturity means how much is the, how much time does the person still growing? Now, Rizzer sign will not tell you how tall the person's gonna become or how much actual growth they have left, it just tells us how much time do, do we think they have left, left before they're completely done growing. Rizzer signs are different for every single person. They don't start and end at the exact same time. And girls go through um, puberty or growth at an earlier stage than boys do. So it's even different by when you look at whether it's a boy or a girl in terms of how much they're going to be going or how, when they start to go through this growth stage. Rizzer signs are normally assigned stages for something called zero negative zero plus, one, two, three, four, and five. And the bigger the number, the closer to five, the more likely they are to be com uh, completely, or they're, they're done growing, the more smaller the number, zero negative, they haven't even started this rapid phase of, of growth. Rizzer sign refers to ossification of the bone. And as the bones fully ossify and seal, that means they've, be, they've been totally grown. There's no more growth left. As long as that growth plate is open, the body, the bone is still growing and developing and skeletal maturity hasn't fully developed or happened at this point. Now, most progression for scoliosis patients happens pre rizzer 3, definitely pre rizzer 4. When you start moving into 4, into 5, it's less likely to cause progression because in those stages of rizzer development, there's less growth, but there's still development associated with it. So when we look at the growth plate, it's right on top of the hip. So we know we can see this, this rizzer sign 
on a scoliosis x-ray relatively easy. And so therefore, as you're taking the scoliosis x-ray, you can see the Risser sign and you can determine that. Now, when we look at Risser sign and size of scoliosis and whether a patient needs uh, surgery or not, you know, the most common question is, well, I have this degree curve, am I worsening? And then will I require surgery? And the reality is that many cases of scoliosis will never need surgery, especially if they're treated properly. And this was what I was trying, trying to indicate earlier is that there's two main scoliosis treatment approaches. One I call the traditional treatment approach and one I call more of a modern or conservative treatment approach. Traditional treatment approaches tends to funnel patients to surgery. And the reason why it tends to funnel patients to surgery is because when curves are smaller and they're more easier treatable with more conservative methods, they normally recognize recommend nothing. So when curves are diagnosed, it doesn't matter where they are in the growth stage, if they're less than 25 degrees, they normally recommend nothing. They just watch and see what happens. However, my argument is if you treat a curve that's less than 25 degrees, even if it's a curve that's not going to progress, there's no harm in making a small curve smaller, but not treating a small curve and letting it become more severe. Now you're looking at more invasive treatments and possible surgery, and there's a lot of harm. Now we know curves less than 25 degrees, mild curvatures at this stage, if they're pre-puberty, I mean, they haven't gone through puberty, uh, a puberty growth spurt yet, one of every three curves will progress to severe standards by the time they're done growing. So two of every three don't. So the majority of cases don't progress to severe, but one of every three does. If that one of every three is my child, I would want to treat it. But the problem is what they're saying, traditional treatment options, it's not recommended to treat all of these patients because only one in three will become surgical, while two or three don't. So therefore, they don't treat patients less than 25 degrees. Once curves break 25 degrees, but are less than 40, they call this moderate scoliosis. Now here, in our conservative model, we recommend treatment as well. We want to treat these curves not only when they're below 25, but we want to treat them below when they're um, below 40 as well to try to stop it from ever becoming over 40 degrees. In this stage, traditional approaches normally recommend one of two options. Half the time, they recommend nothing. Again, they just watch it and see what happens. The other half, they recommend a Boston brace or a, or a Providence brace to try to slow down progression. These braces are designed to slow progression, not really designed to reduce the curve. They're just trying to slow down how much it's worsening. And then unfortunately, once curves break 40 degrees, this is when curves become severe, and this is when they start considering spinal surgery. Now, spinal surgery is, uh, or scoliosis surgery involves spinal fusion. Now, fusion is the exact opposite of what your spine is designed to do. Your, design, your spine is actually designed to move. It is built for movement. The design of the spine, the shape of the spine, the, every, every aspect of the spine is designed to protect the spinal cord while allowing for as much movement as possible. In fact, a very well-functional spine has good flexibility associated with it. Scoliosis surgery is spinal fusion that eliminates all movement of the at area of the spine. It actually fuses the spine together in that area of scoliosis to try to hold it together. And the goal of scoliosis surgery is to stop progression, not really correct what's causing scoliosis. It's not a cure for scoliosis, it's to stop progression. Now, many often, very often when they do scoliosis surgery, they can reduce the size of curvature, but it's an invasive, it's a non-functional approach because it's a limiting movement of the spine. And we don't know what the effects are really long-term, 20, 30, 40, 50 years from these surgeries. We don't know how it affects your overall health, strength, and function of the spine long-term. So therefore, we recommend that it, even if curves become severe, sometimes we can treat these patients and get them below surgical threshold. Unfortunately, very often, my average patient who walks in my office has already been told they need surgery, and we're trying to reduce the curve below surgical threshold. And in many cases, we're successful. In fact, uh, we find cases that are 60 degrees or less, we can only get them below surgical threshold and try to prevent that type of surgery from ever occurring. So here at Scoliosis Reduction Center, we definitely recommend conservative treatment approaches to scoliosis scoliosis, especially in early stages, because in early stages, you can evade the progression and not have to deal with the effect that a curve has become severe and you've recommended surgery. However, if you already, already, ha already have a severe scoliosis, you've already been recommended surgery, there's very often we can reduce curves below surgical threshold to eliminate the need for scoliosis surgery. And we use this all by maintaining and retaining normal spinal function, not by eliminating it. And that's the end stage of spinal fusion is a, it's eliminating function of the spine. It's not making the spine function more functional. It's actually making it less. 
Another need for conservative treatment is for patients that are low RISR sign, meaning if their RISR is zero negative or zero positive or one, two, or three, if they do scoliosis surgery too soon, what they're going to do is they're going to stunt growth wherever they fuse the spine because it can no longer grow and develop properly in that whole area. So a lot of times they can't do surgery because the patient's too young because if they do one surgery, they don't have to do another surgery later on to decompress the spine and allow the, surgery, allow the spine to kind of grow up to its natural level. So therefore, they have to they normally just wait. Well, during this stage, you normally want to be doing conservative treatment, at least to slow down any kind of progression, but more, more likely if you're doing good, modern conservative treatment, we can actually reduce the curve during this stage and prevent scoliosis surgery from ever happening. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.